know, when I look around at all the entrepreneurs who are grinding it out, spending 70 to 80 hours per week growing their business, you have to ask yourself the question, at what cost? Hi, my name is Tim Uchuk, and in this podcast, we're going to be exploring the tools, tactics, and strategies for crushing it and scaling your business without making the ultimate sacrifice of your time and freedom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Tim Uchuk here. It is, at the time of this recording, the day before Thanksgiving, and uh, I had a bit of time this afternoon, and something that's been kind of top of mind, we we talk about it in our team and in our Perfect Week coaching program all the time, but today's episode is going to be marketing-themed, marketing-themed, and um, I think the term marketing is is very confusing, and it's it's just a nebulous kind of catch-all for what is a very broad um, topic, broad category, and how I think about marketing. I'll just start at the top with with defining what marketing is, and then what I want to get into is kind of the the universal principles behind marketing and, and how to make it effective so that as things are changing with the latest, greatest fads and tools and tech, these things will never change. So that's what I want to share with you today so that you can kind of just get more clarity around this this term. What is marketing and how can we get marketing to work for us? So how I think of marketing is um, if you think the think about the analogy of golf, right? And picture the the golf ball on the green. And how I see marketing is it moves the ball closer to the hole, and it allows you to achieve greater success. So think in terms of conversion rates. Um, that whole sales process is made much easier when people know you, like you, trust you, and are preconditioned to want to do business with you. When that happens, the ball is much closer to the hole and it becomes a tap-in putt. So the sales is much easier. In the absence of marketing, the that putt, you're, you're looking at a 20, 30-foot putt <laughs> you know, for, for your sales team. So when you have good marketing in place, you're moving that ball closer to the hole and making the job of your sales team much easier because you have a mechanism for identifying your target audience and warming them up and um, getting them again to know you like you trust you and then understanding you know being problem aware so aware that they actually have a problem and then turning to you for the solution hopefully and then eventually converting to a customer okay so that's the the definition it's moving that golf ball closer to the hole um, which improves your profitability your conversion on sales etc etc that's how i like to define and, and think about marketing now, the purpose of this podcast, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but this is one of those um, writer downers for you. If you've got a, uh, a piece of paper and a pen, I, it's going to be helpful to visualize what I'm describing to you. And then when it comes to marketing strategy, it's going to be much, much easier for you to just get really intentional um, with, with what it is you want to achieve. Okay, so if you have a pen or a pencil or a Sharpie, whatever is going to help you to write write this down and visualize it. Grab that, grab a piece of paper. First thing you're going to do is draw a a picture of a funnel, a picture of a funnel. So it's going to be wide at the top, narrow at the bottom. All right. And then what we're doing here within the, within the realm of marketing is you're going to want to put from top to bottom, the numbers one through six. So one is at the top, the widest part of the funnel, all the way to six at the bottom of the funnel. Now, this is part art, part science. This is just going to be um, hopefully a way for you to just wrap your head around um, your marketing activities and, and where to focus your, your attention resources and allocate your spend and so on. So if you have a funnel in front of you, you know, wide at the top, narrow at the bottom, you've numbered it at the top, widest part one, at the bottom at six. The top of the funnel, so in terms of the stuff that you're doing online, our goal, again, is to have messaging and we can use different channels and mediums for that messaging, right? Old school, we've got radio ads, TV ads, and we've got print, and we've got direct mail, and we've got all of these different channels, right? And the aim of those channels is to put a message in front of the right audience and move them into your world, into your realm. Now, at the top of the funnel, typically, when people are first entering your world, they're cold, right? And, and the job of marketing is to, to move people from cold to warm, to hot. And a hot, a hot client or customer is one who knows you, likes you, trusts you, um, would recommend your product. And that's where you know, a lot of people are able to leverage things like uh, referrals and repeat business. That's at the bottom. That's, that's hot. 
But the vast majority of people entering your world are not hot and they're not warm. They're cold. And so we need mechanisms in place. We need systems in place to systematically convert strangers into clients. How do we do that? Well, these, these numbers one through six are what I'm going to describe to you. And so when people talk about, hey, I, I need to do more social media, we got to start posting more social media. A lot of times they don't really know <laughs> what, uh, what they're posting and why they're posting and what role social media serves. So I want you to think in terms of um, the best analogy for this is when you go to Costco and you get these free samples, right? You're getting value in advance. People are just giving you something without um, wanting anything in exchange. You don't have to give them any money. You don't have to give them your name, your email, nothing. That's ungated content. They're simply giving you a little nugget, a little splinter of value, and just saying, here you go. I hope you like it. In doing so, there's all kinds of psychological benefits to doing that. But, I mean, you're, you're giving value in advance, and um, the people that are the right fit are going to say, you know what? I like that taste. I'm going to buy I'm gonna buy it. I mean, actually, I want a lot more of that stuff. I want to bring it home with me. So that's the very top, number one, which is free, ungated content where you are giving things that would be perceived to be valuable to your target audience. Now, this can be things like, um, uh, you know, quotes are valuable oftentimes just to, to associate your brand with things that are uplifting. So that's where people are, are posting on social media quotes. It could also be just a quick, um, either like a blog article, or it could be a quick video where you're talking about a common challenge. So for example, believe it or not, this podcast that you're listening to is falls into the number one category. You don't have to give me any information to get this little nugget of value that I'm sharing with you right now. So this would be under number one, which would be free, ungated content. And again, a podcast is a great example of that because um, it helps to establish awareness. And hopefully I'm establishing myself as somebody who knows something about what I'm talking about. And so I'm moving you naturally through that know you, like you, trust you. And that's what social media kind of helps you to do. It, it helps you to get you know, in front of the right people and um, hopefully set up the right bait. So you can, you can tell that through the very nature of this podcast, we're talking about marketing for business owners. And that is not going to be interesting to a lot of people out there. But to my fish for this particular, um, you know, my program and the people I'm, I'm out there to serve, this is, this is appropriate, right? So it's relevant for my target audience. I also on a daily basis, if you look at my Instagram, I'm sharing inspirational quotes oftentimes. And um, so that's the role. Number one is, is you would write down free ungated content. Next to number two, we're going down the funnel and it's going to be something of perhaps a little bit more higher perceived value that they can consume and implement immediately. So examples of that would be a free training, a free case study. It could be a, um, you know, a, a 10 step checklist. Um, it could be anything that is, is going to be answering questions that might be top of mind or challenges that might be top of mind for your target audience. And so you would provide that either through, um, through a video, it could be a PDF, um, something that people can consume, it's going to be perceived value, it's going to answer some of the questions or challenges that are top of mind for your fish, your target audience, and you're providing that in exchange for an email, right? So it's a slightly higher level of commitment than number one, which is free and ungated. And um, oftentimes, um, and I'm going to refer to these six things as offers, okay? So the very top um, offer, uh, number one at the top of your funnel, is uh, free ungated um, and and typically what I do because I, I think uh, you should always have a call to action. So in in free ungated um, content number one, I'll often say, hey, if you like this, um, make sure to like it or or share it or comment. And so call to action and the benefit there is that it allow there's some <laughs> we can do some retargeting essentially and, and serve those people with with ads is number one. But number two, if they engage in a post um, on social media, the benefit for them engaging is it's going to be distributed widely because um, Facebook, Instagram, all of these networks, they their algorithms are trained to, to want people to engage. So if people are engaging, meaning liking, commenting, and sharing, then it's going to, for free, you don't have to pay a cent, 
it's going to be shown to more eyeballs. So your call to action on that um, uh, phase one, number one um, offer at the very top of your funnel is going to be, hey, if you like this, um, like, comment, share. That's, that's a very common call to action. Um, so number two, the, the lead magnet, again, is something of, of higher perceived value. Um, could be a PDF, could be a video, um, could be a redeemable coupon discount in exchange for the email. So that's number two. Underneath number two, number three, typically, if we're following the, the phases of know you, like you, trust you, is typically a, a meeting, a face-to-face. -face. And so this could be you know, either scheduling an appointment through your website we use um, some tools to get people straight into the calendar to set up a, a meeting where we're, uh, you know, they can be called strategy sessions, um, discovery calls to see, hey, what, uh, let's talk about some of your challenges and problems and let's see if, if we're able to help out, that type of thing. So if you're, if you're like an estimator um, when it comes to, you know, painting, construction, um, home building, uh, any type of consulting, professional services, agencies, uh, you would be wanting to send people to a to set up a, a meeting, a discovery call, because what happens in front of the um, or after the meetings, if it looks like a good fit, those are the things that lead to sales. But uh, a lot of people in, in your audience are, are likely not ready for that yet. And so that's where we do a lot of the, uh, the social media, your top of mind, people are aware of you, they're associating you with value. And then at some point in time, maybe not today, but in the future, they know who you are, what you do, and they're going to reach out and schedule a meeting. So you want to make that really low friction. You want to have give people the opportunity to do that um, low friction through your website by having a, uh, you know, click a button and, and schedule your discovery call or strategy session, whatever you want to call it, and then get them right into the calendar. So that's number three. Um, number four, now we're getting into, so we've gone from ungated content, number one. Number two, we've gotten uh, into uh, asking for an email in exchange for something of value. And then number three we are uh, would be a meeting. And then number four would be um, the first exchange of money for, for value. So that would be your lowest level service offering. And I'm using a term here, this is through... Uh, uh, pretty popular sales training, um, which is Sandler, which I, I highly recommend. What is it? There's a book called You Can't Teach a Kid to Ride a Bike at a Seminar, I think is the name of the book, but highly recommend it. I think it's one of the best sales books out there. But um, the term that that is used is called a monkey paw. It's called a monkey paw, and that's a very low value sales offer. So in, in my compressor business, for example, our monkey paw, and I'll tell you where the where this is derived from, is to just set up a free audit, air audit for their system. So it could be a manufacturing shop or whatever. It's um, it's really cheap and it gets us in the door and allows us to deliver a little bit of value, demonstrate our our knowledge, our ability, our expertise. And then the next step would be you know a high high ticket um, piece of equipment or service, right? So a monkey paw is something that's really really cheap. The analogy comes from the uh, when a when a big cruise ship is docking. They have to get that massive thick rope onto the dock to anchor. And um, so to do that, they have a, a, a wire that hooks onto it and assists to bring to do the heavy lifting, to get it onto the, onto the dock and, and, and affix it, get it anchored in there. And so that's called a monkey paw. And so the purpose here, again, is to have something low value, to get the foot in the door, and you can demonstrate your expertise, provide some goodwill. And once you get your foot in the door, all things considered, if they're looking at other um, service providers, if they've already, you know, established a bit of rapport with you, you've got a much greater chance of, of landing the bigger deal. So monkey paw, again, is, is number four, which is a low ticket. It could be like, um, uh, for us, it's an air audit. So something that's, um, again, cheap, it's going to be solving a, a smaller problem just to get them moving forward, some forward momentum. So that's number four. Number five would be the actual sale, your core product. Um, now that you've you've moved them from cold to warm, they're hot enough and trusting enough to want to do business with you. They know you like you, trust you, and they see you as being a uh, a viable solution to whatever problem that they are facing. So that's your sale, number five, your core product sale. 
uh, or core product offering. And then number six at the very bottom is repeat um, customers and or referrals, a referral program. And that's it, one one through six. So again, I'm going to um, just kind of run through these once more. Number one at the very top of your funnel would be free ungated content. This is where you're posting on social media. Purpose of that is for people to be aware of you, know you, like you, trust you, associate you with um, providing value in within your domain so that you're top of mind whenever they are facing challenges. And you're just providing some, some nuggets of, of value to help them uh, a lot of the, the content, for example, uh, is, is around making people problem aware because they might not even be aware that they have a problem. So some of the content that you're seeing on social media is things like, hey, did you know that running your business in this way is, is really costing your business? Uh, so for me, for example, in our program, we teach you know, hiring and onboarding and attracting A players and so part of that education might be understanding the true um, difference between an A player and a B player and what it's really costing your business. So a lot of people that don't understand that if you hire the wrong person and you spend three months onboarding them, that is it's very costly on many levels to your organization. Uh, we're talking about you know the time it takes to train the person. That's all. That's a sunk cost. That's out the window if they're the wrong person. And then you've got the reputational, you know, you set them out there in front of your customers and they're doing things wrong. They're going to be impacting your reputation. There's tons of costs underneath the surface that people might not be aware of. So that'd be an example of um, often through story, you might do a social media post just talking about, um, you know, the time that you hired a, a bad apple and the implications and the costs and understanding it. So that's the type of stuff that you're um, going to be sharing on number one, free ungated content. And then number two, again, is that lead magnet, which um, every business, modern business, needs a mechanism for generating leads so that you can communicate with them on a regular basis. And in time when they're ready, they're going to you know, develop hopefully warm fuzzies for you <laughs> when the time comes and reach out to that, to that next stage, which is setting up a meeting. So when you have that lead magnet in place, now you can set out, uh, send out valuable value added you know emails pieces of education um to again stay top of mind and provide value associate yourself with value so number one free ungated content number two is lead magnets number three meetings these could be like strategy sessions etc number four is a very low friction purchase item which we call the monkey paw number five is um your core offer so selling your product and then number six is rinse and repeat so that's repeat customers and referrals. So when you look at your marketing and you divide it into these six dimensions, it begins to make sense. And you can look at your entire, take a step back, zoom out 30,000 feet and ask yourself the question, are we sharing free, ungated, um, valuable content on a regular basis so that we are top of mind in front of the right people? Do we have a, a lead magnet in place so that we're generating, you know, leads and contacts of, you know, relatively qualified, interested, engaged people on a regular basis? And do we have a process in place to nurture them so that when the time comes, they are ready to go, ready to rock? And when that time does come, do we have a easy, low friction method for them to set up a, an appointment, a meeting for a initial discover, discovery call or strategy session? Number four. Do you have a monkey paw, so a very low friction product? And this is kind of an optional thing. I mean, for some of my businesses, we have this. For some, we don't. Um, but it's a low friction opportunity, especially these are important when you have a very high ticket product. So for some of our products, they're, they're upwards of $100,000, a couple hundred thousand dollars. So for somebody to you know get comfortable with us, we have a monkey paw offering, which is a couple hundred bucks, just to get a, a consultant in the door and provide some value before they're ready to commit to investing, you know, like I say, a hundred thousand, a couple hundred thousand bucks. Um, and then your core product offering is number five. And then number six is rinse and repeat. So having a referral program in place or having a, um, a program in place for, for repeat customers, right? A loyalty program, for example. So if you understand these six dimensions, you can start to get strategic and, and measure your, your company, benchmark your company against these six areas. Do they exist? Are you doing it? If not, where, where are some areas that you can look to improve and increase your um, capabilities when it comes to marketing? So I hope that was useful. Again, um, I hope that made sense visualizing this funnel and these six kind of phases um, or six types of offers 
from cold to hot um, for your clients and for your leads. So I hope that was helpful. I'm going to jump into uh, another hour of work here, and then we're probably going to go for a walk in the woods with the kiddos. So um, again, hope that was helpful, and I will catch you guys on the next episode. Take care. Hey, Tim Uchuk here. And real quick, if you enjoyed this podcast episode, if you could take a couple quick seconds to give it a rating, it would be very much appreciated. And secondly, if you're looking for more tools and strategies on how you can crush it in life and business, just head on over to bookwithtim.com where I've put together a free case study which shows you how to unlock unprecedented freedom today by using the two power levers. Just head on over to bookwithtim.com. Until next time, wishing you success and freedom in your business. Cheers.